All right, welcome to the Talk and Smash podcast. I'm your host, Matt Hetherington. I'm joined by Matilda Ekholm from Sweden <laughs> and in yes, Sweden. Sweden. Yeah, um, correct. Matilda, one of the more notable women's table tennis players, especially from Europe. Um, you reached the top 20 in the women's world ranking, had a lot of podium finishes at the European Championships. Um, I this This topic for me is... Uh, obviously one that I'm pretty passionate about um, with the whole situation with the Olympics in New Zealand. Um, and for me, you kind of have this perfect story of, well, okay, maybe not perfect from your standpoint, but, but uh, just p persevering through those difficulties um, during your table tennis career. Um, so there's a lot of controversy and um, yeah, I think a great tale of perseverance and continuing on through those hardships. Um, I'm going to start aside from the controversial part now. <laughs> um, so you're, you've been based in the U S for a, a basically a little while now since ending your international career. Um, so maybe you can tell people a little bit more about how table tennis is still part of your life. Uh, obviously the coaching director at ping pod and played in the first season of major league table tennis as well. Yeah, yeah, there's uh there's there's been a lot going on since the pandemic and I'm very fortunate in so many ways. Um I ended my career sooner than I had planned. Um I was about to try to qualify for Tokyo. Um mm. but when it got pushed out and uh, all the pandemic happened, I I kind of figured like I might as well retire now because it's going to take a lot of work. And I was about to be like at the end of it. Um, so I figured like I might as well quit now. And um, at the moment that felt like the the right decision. I felt very mm. relieved not having to perform all the time. And which turned out to be just it, that performance thing just moved over to other aspects of my life. So that didn't really right. matter, but yeah, the mindset the time, of an athlete. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought I was just going to be like chilling and relaxing and have a nice life, you know, and I, I do have a nice life, but um, I'm still definitely trying to perform in everything I do. So, um, but yeah, I, um, I came to the U S um, almost exactly when Ping Pot opened. And uh, mm. so as soon as I had a work permit, I started coaching there. And then um, uh, for whatever reason, they wanted to hire me to be the director of coaching. So well, we know the reasons because I did a podcast with Max. So everybody who's oh, seen right. that knows all of the great stuff that he had to say about you. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that was very humbling. Uh, but yeah, uh, since since uh, 2021, I've been working as director of coaching, and um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, very stimulating to be able to help other coaches, and um, mm. we have a big team of coaches now. It's uh, it's amazing, and um, yeah. Uh, then I hadn't really thought about going back to playing because uh, the competition is so fierce and. Just after being gone for like two years, I, I knew that the young players with the plastic ball and mm -hmm. it's just like, I, I, it didn't occur to me that I could be competing again because it would take so much. But then Major League Table Tennis came along and that was pretty much perfect for me because uh, at least the first season, the, there were not so many international players, so... Yeah. I felt like, oh, I if I just practice and get back in shape, then I, at least I can be here and compete. And that was very tempting. And um, yeah, the first year was so much fun, and uh, I can't I can't wait for the for the second year. Yeah, the the, the lineups look pretty good. I think your team picked yeah. up uh, Liam, right? So yeah, it'd be interesting. Yeah, we we have a strong strong team, but. Um, also, the the league in general is just so much stronger now. So, I'm definitely practicing hard this summer. <laughs> Are you ready for the prospect of potentially playing a lot of women's singles matches? Yeah, 
yeah i mean um i don't know if it's decided yet if it's uh, gonna be um mixed or women's against I each other i think i think it's kind of at the discretion of the two teams playing is what i heard oh Okay, they could decide okay. whether they whether they do women singles or whether they just do the the, um, the roster order and see what yeah. happens. So I think there are pros and cons to both um, approaches, but I, I'm ready for anything. So it's just it's gonna be fun. I'm I think I've come to a place where I'm I'm definitely don't want to lose anyone who sees me play. <laughs> knows that. Um, but I do know that. The, the players this upcoming season are very strong. So that's something to just keep in mind. Mm. Okay, let's get into the uh, the nitty gritty of the, the podcast. Um, <laughs> so obviously throughout your career, um, you were one of the top women's players in Europe. Um, you qualified for the Olympic Games three times. And unfortunately for you, on the first two of those occasions, um, the Swedish Olympic Committee rejected that nomination. Um, I don't think many people would understand um, why that might happen. Uh, somebody who's not really familiar with, I mean, you know, this happens in New Zealand every single time um, yep. since 2004. So I know about it, um, but for the people who are gonna watch this, can you take them through and also me through what happened the first time in 2008 um, when you qualified for Beijing Olympics and what the reasons are or what the reasons were on that occasion behind them uh, deciding that you wouldn't get to play the Olympics? Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're going to hate well, me I, after this. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's all good. There was... Uh... There was a lot of good coming out of this too, so I don't have a problem talking about it at all. And but I should say that I also qualified for Tokyo, so it's actually four times. But that was oh. by yeah, that was okay. by ranking, and we already had young Swedish players who were very much active and hungry to play. So there was just it was not even up for discussion to send me that time. But um. What uh, so what happened in Beijing was um, I qualified as one of the last players. Um, it was like the the last quota from Europe, and mm. uh, I was only twenty six at the time, which is not super old, but not super young. But um, at, nowadays in table tennis, it's actually quite young if mm. you look at how long you can actually play. Um, but the reasoning behind, so Swedish Olympic Committee and uh, a few other countries, um, among others, New Zealand have, um, an extra qualification or so to speak, it's, uh, you first have to qualify through the Olympic qualifications, the international, and then your NOC, your, your country also have to say, okay. And most countries, they will just immediately be super happy to have an Olympian go and uh, but there are I think three countries that I know and it's Netherlands New Zealand and Sweden hmm. who um who I like it's at the discretion of in Sweden at least the person in charge of table tennis and the person in charge of table tennis he um he said I was too old so I was not a future prospect at age 26, so um, he decided together with whoever, I, I'm not sure exactly the process, but the, it was decided that I was too old and that was what they told media. And which was ironic because uh, the, the substitute player from Sweden in the men's team, he was 25. And they chose him specifically because of his future prospect for next Olympics. So that was also said in the media, like we're sending this guy because he is the future. And um, I was not because I was one year older. So that was a tough one because I was not ready for it at all. 
and I was like up and coming. I was steadily getting better. And did you know? Also... Did you know at, at the time? Did you know that it was a possibility that you could qualify and not go, or was that I, something I, that kind I, of came out of the blue? No, I knew about this restriction. And I also knew that the Olympic Committee didn't necessarily like me very much. I was not part of their program where they hmm. where they sponsor athletes. The okay. the guys of my team, of course, they were on, on the program, but I wasn't. And it also has to do with the the criteria of if if they believe that you can win a medal or not. And so they thought the guys could, but not me. And yeah, um, but I, I, I don't know. I somehow I, I pushed through. I had support from my coach, and um, I was still young, so I, I kind of just figured like, okay, I'm. I didn't start playing table tennis because I want to go to Olympics. I, I play because I love it. So. Right. It's not going to stop me from playing. Um, but yeah, so that's that's how Beijing was. And then London was <laughs> very special because at the time I was, uh, I would have been seated, uh, I think, number 16 or 17. So I was and, quite and high course, in the rank. London also you won the the world olympic qualification. Yeah, right? yeah, that was yeah, that was that was maybe an even bigger thing. Um Yeah. So I I didn't go to qualify and got the last spot. I I won the qualification tournament and we we had asked them before me and my my association we had asked them um is there a reason for me to go and play because it was in Qatar, it was a expensive yeah, trip right. and yeah. And they were like, just go and play and do your best. And That's I didn't say nice. anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so I kind of figured like I really need to win this tournament. I mm. can't be it can't be one of the last spots. So when you went there, did you feel like if you won the tournament, that would give that would kind of carry you over the line? It's like, hey, if I win the world Olympic qualification, surely they have to send me. Yeah, that's that's kind of how it felt. Also, because there were so many good players there, and um, I I beat a whole bunch of really good players, and um, and yeah, like you said, I won the whole tournament. I could not have done it better, and um, and they just said no. And <laughs> this time, of course, I was even older, so they were even more sure of that I'm not a future prospect, but it, it was really tough because at that time I was, I was ranked, uh, I'm not sure, but I think top 30, top 40. Mm -hmm. And, um, I had some really good results, uh, even that year. Uh, so that was, um, ITTF, they went crazy and they, they were so angry and they paid for my trip to London to go and watch and just, experience olympics and go to the village and all of that but uh which was which was amazing and nice gesture but i think they also did it like to to show my olympic committee that you're so wrong about this one so yeah was it was it aside from getting the chance to go and to be there and to experience it was it also difficult to be in that environment knowing that you qualified and not playing yeah, it was a weird feeling, um, but I I got so much support from all over the world, and mm. I I felt kind of energized by that. So it was like it's kind of the world against them, and and yeah. they're all cheering <laughs> for me. So so I I would actually say even though I was a much better player, twenty twelve, I was more sad twenty. Yeah, uh, 2008. Okay. All right. So you'd, I guess also having experienced it once before, maybe. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. could go either way though. It could either be worse or it could be okay. Um, yeah. But I, I somehow knew that, okay, I, I could come back from the first one. I can come back this time too. And I, I got better with every year. So it wasn't like I stopped progressing as a player. 
after the second one, how, how did you feel mm. about the whole qualifying for Olympics? Was it something that you just kind of said, you know what, I'll just play all these other events or did you think, okay, I've, I've done twice now and they've told me I'm not a future prospect twice. What happens next time? Yeah. I, for 2016, I really didn't expect to go at all, even though I was even better in the rankings and my results. I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that till the end because I wanted to end the, uh, the podcast on a high note. Um, I do a break segment in the middle. So this is basically totally, uh, almost totally unrelated to table tennis, um, just to kind of break things up. So I decided to, I was actually trying to think of something creative and I hadn't written any podcast scripts for a while. So this was actually the hardest part for me to asking the table tennis questions is easy. Coming up with the break mm -hmm. segments is hard. Um, so I decided to just do, uh, three things to rapid fire, three things. Um, so you have to tell me three things for different scenarios. So the first one is three things you love to eat when you're not in a good mood. Pizza, chocolate, and popcorn. Is this, is this a, a thing since after coming to America or is this a always? Oh, always in the food in Sweden always? is okay. much better than in the u.s mm, so of course of course yeah. i think a lot of countries is better okay uh <laughs> three things that you absolutely have to have with you if you're traveling for a table tennis tournament um aside from my racket it's um contacts mm, i don't know i just always bring my racket shoes and the Racket and shoes is the only racket, thing. Racket, shoes, can and, and, and vision. <laughs> yeah, racket, shoes, and contacts. That's that's the three things that you can't just, you can't wing it and get it last minute. Right, so. that's true. That's very true. Yeah. Uh, three songs that you might listen to before a match. Are you a music listener before matches or? Oh, uh, yeah, in, in periods coming and going, but yeah. Um, oh, wow. The Water Boys, The Hole of the Moon. And this is the part the, where I nod and pretend that I know these. <laughs> well, it's a song from the 80s. Um, okay. I would say um, something by Beach Boys, probably. Nice. Um, something upbeat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, wow, well, this is... Tough one. Um, I don't know. Irreplaceable by Beyonce. Oh, I really okay. like that song. Cool. This is my favorite part about these because usually I send out all the questions in advance, except for this. I always leave this out. Um, mm. And I've done some really ridiculous ones before. Um, I had Sophia Klee choose a bank heist team from her teammates. So, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. Yeah. 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 Stuff like that just kind of throws people off and they don't know what to think. Um, three things that help you handle losing a match. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, kicking something. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, saying some bad words and then uh, just uh, let 15 minutes go by. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I, I try to not throw my racket too often, but um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not proud of my behavior sometimes, but 15 minutes. You gotta get it, gotta yeah. get it out, right? Yeah, 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 it's, uh, yeah, a lot of emotions when I play table tennis, that for sure. Um, wait, so you're saying 15 minutes and then you want to do that or just... Okay, so give yourself a bit of a breather first and then... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, after nuts. 15 minutes, I'm... I'm... <laughs> no, after 15 minutes, I'm usually just like, okay. I, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's I'm done, right? like... yeah. yeah, I'm not dwelling on losses uh, for too long because I knew I did my best, but the immediate reaction is hard for me to control. Mm. Which I like. I like that kind of stuff. 
like well within reason but I, yeah. I like to see somebody who actually cares about what they're doing <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. The last one, this one should be easy for you. Three reasons why everyone needs to visit Sweden. Who? Everyone. everyone. Three reasons uh, every why some, yeah, every, um, yeah. <laughs> because uh, we have the best chocolate in the world. And um, the summers in Sweden are amazing because we don't have dangerous animals. And nice. there's no, there's no private property. So you can just walk in the forest and just like pick berries and oh, that's wherever nice. you want. Yeah. So I, I would say that's maybe the biggest thing. Come to Sweden and just go out in the forest. Just go so, out and just you know. forage through anybody's yeah. property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's not going to be any signs of private property anywhere. And you can even stay the night if you want in a tent, wherever you want. So, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I have so to go. I have to go. I, I really wanted to, um, I played, uh, the worlds in Malaysia and Dusseldorf. And then the following yeah. year was in Harmstad and I really wanted to go and I, I didn't get to go. So oh, yeah. I've never been to Sweden yet. Yet. Yeah. yeah. Harmstad is really, really nice too, especially in the summer. Um, third thing why you should go to sweden i don't know you can experience introverted people it's not a bad thing <laughs> it's peaceful right actually yeah. if you went from america if you went from america that would probably be pretty refreshing to deal with people who are not <laughs> talking loudly well, all the time well i like i like it in the u.s because it's kind of it's contagious i get more like um open and social in the US here in Sweden I've become very Swedish so it's it's good for me <laughs> when you're in New York are you usually because I know you have you, you have like a, a bunch of like Airbnb properties further yeah. up right but when yeah. you're in New York and you're coaching are you, are you living in the city yeah yeah how do you like that because that's kind of an acquired taste for people who are not from New York. I yeah, I like that. to not be in Manhattan because mm -hmm. uh, that's a little bit too stressful for me. So Queens, Brooklyn, it's a little bit slower right. paced. Yeah. I, so I, that's nice for me. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move back on to the uh, the old Olympic topic. Um, so in New Zealand. Um, like I said before, we haven't had anyone at the Olympics since 2004. Um, so nominations are rejected every single time, uh, including this time. So this is something that I generally go on tirades on, on Facebook from time to time. Um, and our national governing body haven't really done anything. Um, <clears throat> but I always think about the impact that it's had on the sport um, overall. Um, I mean, table tennis has been declining in New Zealand level wise for a long time. And a lot of players, they don't even try and play the Olympics. Like they just give up. Um, so obviously Sweden, the, the playing level is a lot higher. Um, but how do you, how do you feel about the impact of, those rejected nominations overall, but also for women's table tennis in particular, because the men's players were going. It was yeah. you that was getting rejected at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Like like I said before, in twenty twelve, I I was the I was higher ranked than all of the guys were at that time. So the men's team weren't even that strong. Right now they're mm. great, but yeah, that time I was higher ranked. So. I think um, for the generation that came just after me, the ones who were a few years younger than me, I think they were probably very bummed out. Mm. And uh, thankfully, we have we have there is money in women's table tennis, even though there's not a lot. But you can still go to play in Europe. You can play in Germany, France, and, and like you won't get rich from it, but you can make a living and you mm. can survive 
So I think a lot of the girls saw me doing that. And even though I didn't go to Olympics, I think they saw that, oh, it's possible to have a career. I'm, I'm getting paid to play. So yeah. I think it's a more disastrous thing in a country like New Zealand for table tennis when it's like the thing you have because you don't have a league where, as far as I know, right. where you can, no, no, there's definitely yeah, not a league. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like where you can get paid. And so yeah. while I think it was not good by any means for, for the Swedish women's table tennis, I think they also saw me persevering and keep going. Yeah. And then we also got some medals at uh, teams for Europeans. And so I think they were motivated by those things and they kept going. And now they've, the, the younger girls, they have been there twice now. It's, they're going in a, in a few weeks to their second Olympics. So I'm very happy for them. Um, and clearly there was something personal towards me. And because these, these uh, female players, they are not better than I was. Um, right. They're not. Yeah. They're not. Has the, has, has the, do you feel like the organization's changed at all? The mm, Swedish Olympic yeah, Committee? Or... I, I'm pretty sure there's a new person in charge for table tennis, uh, which, of course, matters. Uh, but it was also a personal t against me that I like, mm. it, there's no doubt. Um, but. Um, I'm happy to see that that they have been going twice now, and hopefully a lot of young female players are are looking up to these players, and um, yeah, we can keep getting better. We kind of had a an opposite situation in New Zealand at one point. Um, there was the top men's player Peter Jackson. I think he was just outside the top 100 in the world. And one of the years that he qualified, um, they didn't send him, but the women's team were quite strong. And after they rejected his nomination in New Zealand, the Olympic committee actually asked him if he would go to the Olympics as the women's team coach. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> oh, wow. Which is okay. yeah. a bizarre. I mean, fortunately for him, I think he managed, he'd played two already. Um, but yeah, on the third time that he qualified, that was... That was the reality yeah. for him. Uh, it's, it's a tough one. It's, yeah. just, it's so bizarre. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, in New Zealand, it's, I think you have to prove that you can consistently win against top 100 ranked players and finish at least top 16. So I mm. think there's a, there's a window of opportunity. Like if they qualified for mixed doubles, because there were only 16 teams. Yeah. Yeah. Then maybe they could go. Um, yeah, or if they yeah. qualified for the teams, but I mean, I know the men's team haven't beaten Australia since 2004. That's ironic. Cause that's the last time we went. Um, yeah. and yeah. The, the reason that I asked about the women's table tennis is because we in New Zealand went through a period of time where we didn't even have a, a woman, we didn't have a national team for women. Yeah. So yeah. It, it literally just eroded table tennis. Yeah, um, no, I, I imagine yeah. it would if, if because Olympics is the thing for many mm. countries in many sports. And yeah, it's 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 detrimental and it's a, it's a disaster. Um, okay, like I told you before, I wanted to end on the high note and talk about 2016. And we can also talk about Tokyo, which I didn't know about. Um, <laughs> but after those... Uh, two rejections in 2016 you qualified for the olympics and you were able to go um what changed in your mind like, uh, you know yeah. given that you were at such a high level the second time and you weren't able to go yeah why the um, third time i i can only assume <clears throat> what happened and it was so uh that I had a new teammate, which was uh, Li Fun. Uh, mm -hmm. She was originally from China, but uh, playing for Sweden. 
she won the Europeans and she qualified for Olympics. And there was no doubt that she would go. And my thoughts on this is that because she was going, they couldn't, but she was older than me. And she had a a reasonable chance to win a medal either. Like I, Mm. I didn't have a reasonable chance to win a medal and, and she didn't either. So, and, but also she was European champion. So it's just such a big difference between Europe and Asia. So, um, even though she was number one in Europe, it was, didn't mean that she was going to win a medal. But they right. also couldn't not send her because she's the European champion, you know. And um, I think that was like the deciding thing because it would just be too bizarre to have a, an older person play mm-hmm. with mm, almost similar chances. Our levels were comparable. Um, so, yeah, I think they were just like, okay, we got to send her. It's just, it's been too many times now. <laughs> Um, when you found out that you were going, what was it like for you? Just knowing that you'd been through such an ordeal. I I don't think there are many table tennis players since I started playing that have had to go through all the shit that you had to go through in your career. Um, how was it for you when they said, yeah, you're going? Um, It was, (laughs) I think, um, I, I was partially thriving in the underdog position. It was like immediately after each of the Olympics that I didn't go to, I I did some of my best results. So it was almost like, look at this, like you look what mistake you did. Right. Yeah. And, and then when they eventually selected me to go, I was feeling a little bit the same, like, no, there you go. You know, like, (laughs) You could have done this eight years ago. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for doing it now yeah. and not then. Yeah. So I don't know if I was like ecstatic or anything. I don't. I don't think I was. I was more like, all right, I'll do now I'll go then. <laughs> I, I was happy, but you know, I also knew that it's not going to make a big difference in my life, and mm. I don't think it has. But I'm very happy to have been there. It's such a it's such a bizarre story. I mean, yeah, it's 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 really crazy to to think that someone could qualify for an Olympic Games and just not be able to go. And and I'm sure at times you kind of looked back and thought what what it would have been like if you could have gone in 2012. You know, to to even though you got to go, it's like you kind of got robbed of the time when you were playing your best table tennis. Um, yeah. To be on yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think I played even better 2016. So, but what I think would have been good with 2012, um, was that you, you get used to competing. You get, you like, you grow into right. the in-suite. If you say you grow into your costume. It's like, you understand and you understand that, oh, I, I actually have this level of play even in big events. Mm. And like at first you only can do it in practice and then you s- start to understand how to perform in an important match too. And I think that experience would have helped me later on for sure. Mm. Also just going in 2008 would have helped me. But on the other hand, I was... I was giving my best to show them that they were wrong, which also pushed me forward a lot. So who who can say what was, you know, you never know with life. But um, yeah, it's like, I think maybe now afterwards, like in terms of brand, you know, like your brand as an athlete, if you can say that you went four times to Olympics, that's that's like a lot more than I qualified four times and I went once. So. I mean, the majority, the majority of people wouldn't understand if you told me you qualified <laughs> yeah. before Olympics, they'd be like, wow. Um, because yeah, that's it, true. Again, Max. Like I, it just, it never crosses people's minds that someone could qualify and not go. It just yeah. Max, he, he, Max at Pinkford, he, my boss, he usually says like, 
here's Matilda. She qualified four times for the Olympics. And I'm like, but, 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 okay, whatever, you know? It's true. (laughs) I think he knows that you deserve to go four times. Um, When, when, so you said uh, earlier at the beginning that you did qualify for 2021, but you said it was never in consideration. No, that, no, not at all. Was that from your side as well? Like, I mean, I asked them if I would be considered, and they were like, mm, I mean, I was already living in the U.S., and mm. officially I had retired, but my okay. ranking was still very good. So in the end, both uh, Stena Shelberg and Linda Bergstrom, they qualified, and I, I mean, looking at it, even from my perspective, it makes a lot more sense. They would go have my career was ending. Um, but yeah, it was, I, I guess in any other country, they would have sent me, but because they other one, I don't know if Linda had qualified already, but Stina had not qualified yet. So okay. we, we wouldn't have known that someone else would go instead of me, but they wanted to mm. push for them, of course, which I can understand. Well, um, I'm sure a lot of people will, I I feel like this is a a good opportunity for, especially in the U S I think there are a lot of people that know who you are and they know that you're a great player, but this is kind of a story that some people know, um, but not everyone knows. Um, so I think it was a, a good chance for you to share it more. And, um, this is kind of. It's funny because we've, we're, we're on the same page and with the same positions about these things, but we haven't really had a lengthy conversation about it. So it's nice yeah. to, oh, yeah. nice to yeah, have a chat I, with um, someone who understands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I really hope that um, New Zealand will reconsider. I, I don't even understand the purpose. In Sweden, it's like the purpose of this regulation is to not have like amateurs destroying the preparations for the real metal pr- prospects. But that mm. that argument was like just so weird. Like if, if my ranking is better <laughs> than the guys, then how would I be more of a disturbance? You know, it's just it's bizarre. Yeah. Well, we can only hope uh, and cross our fingers that somewhere down the line uh, things get better, but it seems like for Sweden, um, things are looking up a little bit and yeah, maybe I, I hope that at least the sacrifices you had to make, uh, played some part in that and have a yeah. positive impact for some of the younger women's players that come up in Timcast. Yeah, I hope so too. Well, thank you for, hopefully this hasn't taken you too much down memory lane. Um, oh no, thanks, no. I'm, thanks so much. This is great. Yeah, no, thank you very much for having me. It's fun talking. No problem at all. And uh, good luck for your preparations for Major League. I'll see you in in season two. How long are you in uh, Sweden for now? Um, (laughs) For uh, for another few weeks. I'm practicing really hard. Just so my opponents. Good. All right. I'll make sure I clip that out and turn it into a reel so it's on, uh, on Instagram so everyone knows. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Thanks, Matty. Thank you.